The notation I'm using in this lesson was prepared by Burt himself in the early 90s, probably 92 or 93, and probably using C-Lab Notator software on an Atari PC. Uh, at least that was his first system from the late 1980s. He moved on to Logic on a Mac later. Uh, so he did this by playing the notes into the software in real time using a MIDI pickup on his guitar, which I think you can see you can see in this image here. In part one of this pair of videos, you heard how that MIDI file sounded with modern Sibelius guitar samples assigned. But it's important to remember that the sounds were not Bert's aim. His purpose was to produce notation without having to handwrite it himself which he was capable of doing, but not as efficiently, quickly or neatly as the software allowed. The software produced by the raw MIDI data still needed a lot of editing and formatting to make it legible, and Bert was clearly capable of doing that, as you'll see from these images. It's possible he had assistance, uh, for example, from John Renborn, but it seems he didn't need it. So, uh, Bert sent both the MIDI file and his formatted notation to a fan, Mel James, in around 1993, uh, by post on floppy disk and print out in those days, uh, and Mel emailed it all to me about two years ago. Sadly, this is after the publication of Burt Transcribed, so we couldn't use it to confirm our guesses about how Burt played the piece. I did have a transcription from the Renborn Guitar Workshop. Uh, luckily, most of the guesses we made are confirmed, but there are a few intriguing differences which I'm going to go through here. As mentioned in part one, this updated version is substantially shorter than the 1974 studio version. He described it to Mel as an update, but also apologised in a separate note that it wasn't complete because he didn't have a copy of the original album, so had no way of reminding himself of the whole thing. It's possible, therefore, that some of the differences in fingering are due to working out half-remembered passages from scratch. As well as this version missing many sections of the original, there is at least one section which is played quite differently, and uh, small differences elsewhere. Uh, I won't look at every single bar of Burt's notation, just look at where there are significant differences to the fingering and position given in Burt Transcribed. Some of the differences were already present in the live version available in River Sessions, uh, you know, recorded later in 1974, and some are alternatives suggested in the performance notes in the book, uh, page 59. So this is intended as a supplementary lesson to that transcription. I'll be referring to the relevant bars in that version and playing the fingering given there to compare the differences. Of course, where there are fingering differences for the same notes, it's optional how you play it yourself. You might actually find the choices in the original transcription easier than uh, than Bert's choices. So, uh, without further ado, uh, firstly notice Bert has given it an A major key signature rather than the A Dorian single sharp in the book. Although the piece has more of an A minor feel overall than A major, but may have been thinking of blues notation where major key signatures are given even when largely minor thirds are employed. Uh, this means he needs to use a lot more natural accidental signs on the G's and C's than a blank or one sharp key signature would have required. He's also made the time signature 3 4 rather than the compound 9 8 we used, but he actually notates the triplets as if it's in 9 8 without the triplet markings that are strictly required in 3 4. This must have been a deliberate change on his part from the automatic formatting that the software would have provided. Uh, the MIDI file was set to play at a fairly slow 90 beats per minute, perhaps for Mel's benefit, uh, but more likely to allow Bert to play it into the uh, software in real time and minimise the retakes. No tempos given in the notation. So, on to the details. There are no significant differences in the opening section, apart from missing phrases, until we get to the leaf up the fretboard, bar 17 in the original. So bar 17 is played with a hammer on onto the fifth string, seventh fret like this. Okay, it's clear from the sound on the studio version and the River Sessions version, and also from how Burke can be seen playing it in a brief excerpt uh, from 1992's Acoustic Roots. In Burt's notation, 
no string numbers are given, so it's ambiguous um, where that E could be played. But the MIDI file makes it clear that he played it here, because you hear the open A ringing over the E. The MIDI file preserves how each string sounded as he played it, so clearly he was, he was fingering it here. So the leap up the neck then comes after that. Okay, so, uh, and again, that's up to you whether you think that's easier. And it's the same for all these, uh, all the three bars here. And so each one starts with the, with the E down here. The Renvron Guitar Workshop version actually also had, had the E played on fourth string. Of course, uh, we changed that for the book because of the sound of the original is, is clearly the hammer on here. But it does suggest that but himself may have decided soon after that that, that actually it works better down here. Or maybe because he liked the fact that the A, the A note sustains a little bit longer. Until of course you play this note here. Interestingly, in Burt's notation, as you can see here, for this um, for this bar, okay, he has these fingerings as as you would expect: middle finger here, a finger four here. But then he has index finger indicated on the on the A and the third finger indicated on the on the C. So that's obviously physically impossible. Um, so, but he obviously it's obviously a typo, and here. That's where it should be, fingers three here, finger one here. Uh, also, strictly speaking, uh, the E flat in that bar should be a D sharp, because that's a B7 flat nine chord. Okay. So the repeat uh, at this point takes it back to the beginning, uh, and from here the order of sections differs substantially from the original. The studio version goes on to bar 18, but then to a section which appears later in this version. Instead, this version goes to a section which was much later in the original, bars 61 to 64. Uh, and this section was recorded separately in the MIDI file, and he seems to have had trouble getting it to work cleanly enough in the recording. In Burt Transcribe, he showed these bars with a pull-off on fourth string, as the Renborn Guitar Workshop version had it. So as you pull off the fourth string, there's a hammer-on to the uh, six-string third fret, from nowhere, just a tap on the uh, third fret there. Get that a little bit clearer on the camera if I can. But in verse notation, what he's indicated is a double hammer-on. So instead of the D being a pull-off on there, he has a bar here with the index finger and hammers on to the, to the D on the fifth string at the same time as the, as the G bass there. Now it takes a bit of practice to get that to work. And then the third finger comes in here. get it to work either. Okay, test bit of work on that. Right. Okay, so that's the this middle section. And that goes through four times, those two bars, in this shorter version. So the next change is a slightly simpler one. Bar 27 of his version is this little bar which occurs a few times in both versions. Okay, 
So the fingering given in but transcribed was taken from the Renborn Guitar Workshop version, which is this. A double stop with a little finger on the third and second strings. And that pulls off to uh, first and second fingers here. And <laughs> Always, I've always felt personally that's a little bit awkward, could never get it to work. And it seemed to me that this way made a lot more sense. Third and fourth fingers together here, and then sliding the third finger down and pulling off to second finger on the second string. And that's actually so I gave that as an alternative in the performance notes, and that's actually the way Bert notates it himself in his version. Okay, so then that bar is followed by, in the original it was followed by this. Okay, pull off on the fourth string with the C here. But by the River Sessions um, version, he'd already changed that to something like a C major chord, plain C major chord. Okay, and that's as he has it in his his later transcription that we have here. Okay. And this next bar on the D chord, again the original had a. Hammer on to the, the the G on the first string, but he's changed that to okay. Okay. So. Now we come to a more substantial uh, change from the original. In the uh, studio version, there's a, there's a part that goes right up here. Okay. Those two bars were dropped from the River Sessions version. And in Bert's uh, early 90s version, he now has the, the notes played down here. So we're starting with the same little phrase here. And I repeat of that. So uh, now we have three bars which link together, which uh, is very much the same as the original, but there are there is some interestingly different fingering here. It's one of the trickier passages in the piece. In Bert transcribed, it's bars 28 to 32, and in this transcription, it's reduced to three bars, which I think you, which you can see here. So we're starting with. In the book, uh, main transcription, it's this. So down here, before coming to the fifth position. From there it's the same. Followed by, followed by that. And then it leads into, now in the original, it starts with the C on the first string, then a bass C, As, as this string, this note comes in here, there's a B bass note sliding on down here to 5th fret. In, the, um, in Bert's new version, he pulls off to the 1st string first, before the bass note. Okay, like that. And then there's no B bass.
And as he comes down, the fingering changes. So to begin with, he's starting with third finger on the first string. Second finger here. Third finger again on the second string. The index comes in on the D on the third string. We do that again a bit more slowly. Now slide down. Index finger comes down, but then it's replaced with the middle finger. So then we have the open A bass with the C note here, and then the index finger plays the G sharp bass, little finger plays the uh, D on the third string. And then we're into the next bar here with the index finger on the G. Now in the original, the fingering uh, chosen for that one was little finger, and the middle, the middle finger came all the way down the bass string here. So the middle finger here meant that the D had to be here. Okay, and so the thumb came over to play the, the G bass. And then we had the, then it was the same as, uh, same as here. Okay, now Bert has the thumb over on the second half of this bar. So he starts here. And then the thumb. Okay, so the index finger starts with that, then the thumb, and the index is on the second string now. And he does have the third finger here, by the way. Personally, I think if you're down here, I'd, I'd rather put use a little finger. Less of a stretch. <laughs> So that's bar 32 in the original, played like this in Burt's notation. And then in the original, there's a sound of a slide. So we had it uh, notated like this, tab like this. Sliding up to seventh fret. And then sliding from the B to C on the 6th string to the open 4th. Okay. Now, in Burt's notation, he goes from here just a normal open position A minor and then a hammer on hammer on to the D, the D here on the 5th oh, sorry, a hammer on to C on the 5th string to get to the D that way. Wrist is the same. Okay. Uh, the next bar again is very slightly different. In the original, I think it's this. And now in Burt's notation, you can see he's got this. So the second half of that bar is different. Okay, that's bar 34 in Burt Transcribed. And I want to back to the, the riff. So from that point, Burt's version just repeats earlier material. So I think we'll finish this by, I'll play the MIDI file again and line up Burt's notation as it plays. <laughs> 